Dear friends, today we have a special episode of Super Tony's Adventures. Enjoy! <laughs> Hello everyone! Tony, I see that you decided to join the trend and make a Coca-Cola fountain. Yeah, only people who don't have internet haven't tried to put Mentos in a bottle of Coke. Wow! Awesome! So friends, do you know what kind of reaction this is? No? Then let's find out! Let's start with some history. The first experiment of this kind was performed back in 1980. Back then, the ingredients used were a candy known as Lifesavers and any soda. But sometime later, the manufacturers of this candy made them bigger, and it became impossible to stick them through the neck of the bottle. So, if it weren't for this unfortunate decision, everyone would be using Lifesavers instead of Mentos. Then, in 1999, the experiment with Coke and Mentos was shown for the first time on The Late Show with David Letterman, and it started a worldwide trend that keeps going to this day. But let's get back to the experiment. So, when you put a Mentos inside a bottle of Coke, you get an explosive chemical reaction. The sodium benzoate in the Coke reacts with the acacia gum and the gelatin in the Mentos. This produces a great amount of carbon dioxide, which tries to get to the surface, pushing the liquid and creating a fountain. Pretty simple, right? So, I have a couple of life hacks to make your experiment even better. First of all, you can buy uncolored and unglazed Mentos. This kind of Mentos has more elements involved in the chemical reaction, therefore creating more gas bubbles. And you should also use Diet Coke, not only because it's easier to clean, but also because it contains aspartame, which reduces surface tension and makes the reaction even stronger. By the way, baking soda reacts pretty well with Coke, and given that soda is a powder, that's even more surface for an eruption. And what if we use both Mentos and soda? Run, Tony! Run! Haha, <laughs> we're just kidding, friends. You won't get such a reaction just from using Coke and soda. I put something else in there. Try to guess what is the secret ingredient. Today, Tony and I are going to visit the center of the Earth and see what's so interesting there. Let's go! So, for this adventure, we are going to need a super duper hyper ultra mega traveling capsule, like this one. Go on, Tony, get inside and let's see what's inside our planet. We are going in. The part of the planet we are on right now is known as the crust. Just so you know, oceanic crust is less thick than continental crust. It can be up to 40 kilometers thick, which is 90 times less than the radius of the Earth. The planet's crust accounts for less than 1% of Earth's mass and around 5% its volume. At the beginning, the temperature is okay, but after the 20 kilometer mark, the temperature rises 3 degrees every 100 meters. Do you feel it, Tony? Well, it's gonna get worse. We've reached the next layer of our planet. It is known as the mantle. It's the biggest part of the Earth. It accounts for 80% of Earth's volume and it's 2,900 kilometers thick. The temperature in the closest point to Earth reaches 2,000 degrees, while the temperature close to the center of the planet is almost 2,500 degrees. By the way, the upper layer of the mantle behaves as a viscous fluid and the solid layers move in this liquid, causing earthquakes. And finally, we have arrived to the core of the planet. The temperature here ranges from 4,000 to 5,000 degrees Celsius. Not a single thing could survive here. Don't worry, Tony. Fortunately, we live in a fantasy world where everything is possible. Let's get to the core. Oops, it's a dead end. This is the inner core of the planet. It's solid and it's floating in the liquid outer core. This movement creates a magnetic field around the planet, which in turn protects all living creatures in our planet from harmful cosmic rays. That's all, Tony. It's time to go back. Oh no, not again. Tony, how many times have I told you not to eat fast food? It's really unhealthy. Well, now I'll have to give you a punishment and you're not gonna like it. I'm sorry, but it's the only way for you to see how bad fast food is for your health. So, let's start today's experiment. So, it's been a few days since Tony started his fast food diet. Now he's constantly feeling tired, even after getting a good 8 hour sleep. The reason is burgers have too much carbohydrates that pump tryptophan right into your brain, 
and this, in turn, cause tiredness. In other words, the more fast food you eat, the easier it will be to get tired. After only one week, you can see Tony's getting a little bigger. And again, carbs are to blame, because fast food carbs are special. They're known as fast or simple carbohydrates. Your body has a hard time ingesting them, so it stores them as fat. Also, if you eat a lot of fast food in one sitting, your glucose level will go through the roof, making you feel full. But in just about an hour, you'll be hungry again. Besides, fast food contains loads of additives and flavor enhancers that easily stimulate the pleasure center of our brain. As a result, our body gets used to this sensation, which leads to addiction. So even though Tony tried to limit himself to three meals a day, his constant hunger made him eat more and more burgers. Two weeks have passed. Let's check up on our friend. As you can see, his heart is now struggling to pump blood to the system. This happens because trans fats increase cholesterol levels in the body. This creates lumps in the arteries that make the blood flow more difficult. You can also see swellings all over Tony's body because of the salt that is found in large quantities in fast food. It strains the kidneys, and they can't work right anymore. And look how the skin's changed. Fast food has a very high glycemic index, which indicates how carbohydrates from food affect mm -hmm. blood glucose. So remember that fast food has a lot of simple sugars, carbohydrates, and trans fats that can make acne bloom on your face and body. I think after this experiment, Tony will start thinking about his diet. Friends, we don't think you should say no to fast food forever, but at least try to eat it less. For example, no more than once a week. Choose healthier foods that will make you strong, healthy, and beautiful. Remember, you are what you eat. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to present a new episode of Super Tony's Experiments. While Tony is getting all the things he needs for the show, make yourself comfortable, grab a snack, and enjoy the show. It's time for our first experiment. It is known as World Balance. We are gonna need a glass, two forks, a cork, and a toothpick. We take the cork, put the forks on each side of it, and stick the toothpick into one of its end. And now we are gonna place this construction on the edge of the glass. It holds together thanks to the toothpick. Magic! This is possible because the forks, the toothpick, and the cork form a solid body, whose center of gravity is located lower than its support point. Therefore, it remains in balance. The next experiment is known as walking water. We are gonna need five glasses, four napkins, and three food dyes. We fill the glasses with water and dye them with different colors. Then we make small tubes with the napkins and fold them in the middle. We now place them inside the glasses. We just have to wait a couple of hours to behold a colorful waterfall. This is possible thanks to the surface tension of the water. The liquid moves up through the napkin, and when it reaches the top, it starts to go down thanks to our old friend, gravity. In other words, the napkin becomes a conductor between the glasses. Physics, right? Our last experiment is very simple. We are gonna make our own slime. We need craft glue, starch, three cups, a bowl to mix the ingredients, and the right food dye. Measure the same amount of water, starch, and glue. Now take the bowl, pour the water and the glue, and mix them thoroughly. We add some starch and mix the ingredients to obtain a smooth paste with the right color. And just like that, our slime is ready. We didn't use any dangerous products in these experiments, but still, if you want to repeat them at home, be careful. Always use safety goggles and gloves. Hello everyone, Tony and I are staying at home, just like most people, which means you're about to see some cool experiments you can perform at home. Let's go. Let's start with a DIY egg ball. It can be made using a normal egg. First, we have to boil it. You can actually use a raw egg, but if something goes wrong, it might leave a nasty stain and your parents won't be happy about it. Okay, the egg is ready. Now let's put it in a bowl and pour some vinegar on it. Twenty-four hours later, voila, magic! 
the vinegar completely dissolved the shell, creating an unusual bouncy and elastic membrane around it. Moving on, let's make an unusual volcano. For this purpose, we need to find a test tube and pour some 10% hydrogen peroxide solution, some dish soap, and some food coloring. Finally, add some yeast and, behold, the foam volcano. Don't worry, it is absolutely safe. Now let's make a fireproof bill. Just in case, we would recommend you to find one of small denomination. Mix the same amount of alcohol and water, lower the bill into it, and wait a couple of minutes for it to soak. Now take it out using a pair of tweezers and hold it over a sink or any other non-inflammable surface. Let it drain a little and now set it on fire. Fascinating, isn't it? The thing is, in this case, the only thing burning is the alcohol, while the water doesn't heat up enough to evaporate, protecting the bill. In the end, the bill is just a little wet, that's all. Finally, we're gonna make some invisible ink. Mix baking soda and water in approximately equal proportions. Now let's take a cotton swab, soak it in the mixture, and write something with it on a piece of white cardboard. You can't see anything, right? But now we're gonna take some grape juice and pour it all over the surface. The acid in the juice reacts with the soda and reveals the message. Tell us if you have performed any similar experiments. The best stories will be featured in our next video. See you in the next exciting episode of Super Tony. Bye bye!